I know it all. I know how it's like trying to focus on one child and then the other kids, they have their list of demands that you are supposed to meet. But you're just one person, right? You can't divide yourself. Yet, there are five individuals that demand your attention. What do you do? Hmm? Stick around to find out how I do it. Hi guys, my name is Tanda Klaba. I am a homeschool mom of five. I have five girls uh, who are six years in and um, on this channel I share basically about my life but with special interest in home education we also also show you how we do things as a big family of seven I'm passionate about motherhood and all the joys and challenges that comes with it like bring it on <laughs> I also share my motherhood journey on my social media platforms I'll make sure that I leave all my links in the description box so please follow me on social media as well the first thing that will serve you as a homeschooler is to have a routine just have one it's fine you don't have don't don't explain to me just have one just just have one I know when I'm saying just have one I mean just have one <laughs> just have a certain routine that you try to stick to you want to do things according to the routine every day all the time I know but it's better having one than not having one see I know it can be really crazy for parents working from home where are your parents? Raise your hand if you're working from home and now you have to homeschool your kids because of the pandemic. Raise your hand. I see you. Mm. I know. Where are my career mummies? I know. I'm also a civil engineer and working full time while homeschooling my kids. I know. I know. Working, working from home while homeschooling your kids. I know. I know it all. I'm kidding. I don't know it all, but at least I'll share what I think has worked for me and for our family. What's really helped or saved me <laughs> um, is to have a routine. And the way we did it was we wake up very early in the morning. Guys, it was so much easier in summer. Now it's becoming cooler and cooler in the mornings and becoming darker and darker in the morning. So it's not so easy waking up in winter, but we still try. In summer, we wake up very early in the morning and then we'll start with homeschooling first before i leave the kids for work we'll homeschool in the morning before anything like we wake up and then we homeschool first before i leave them for work and mostly we'll do just the core subjects and i did mention that in the previous video it's still our core subjects we're focusing on reading writing and maths and then the other things just fall in in between you know like science or geography or life skills that kind of stuff so or make sure that we focus on the core subjects uh, if I have time with them before I leave for work and then even if I'm working from home that is now like the norm that's they wake up first they start with homeschool and then after that I can leave them and go work or do whatever that I need to do for that day number two I believe we must set rules like if I'm working with your sister and you come disturbing us that is not okay so you must have some sort of rules um, in your household how you see you doing it whether you're homeschooling just one child or even two kids or five kids or ten there must be rules that they all understand that they can't disturb you maybe if you're working with other sibling or this is how they can ask for your attention you know have some rules another tip is to wake the older siblings first yes I don't know it's I don't know how you do it but this is how we do it the older siblings they wake up first before they are younger ones okay I know the youngest will wake up and I will breastfeed her so that she goes back to sleep and then the older one will wake up first so that I can spend time with the older ones while while the younger siblings are asleep once the younger siblings are awake they also demand their attention and then I'll be able to shift my focus and focus on them as well waking the kids a little bit earlier is a game changer just try it please try it especially if you have um, young kids like in this house <laughs> because they they are still tantrum stages they are meltdown stages and that kind of stuff so waking things up early does help because the older kids they get the attention that they need and then the younger kids they also get their attention when they wake up starts with a subject that requires a lot from your child you know that subject if you don't have that subject just starts with maths okay <laughs> starts with maths it, they, it I, I feel it requires a lot of thinking for your child and you want to catch them when their brain is still 
fresh in the morning so they will be able to pay the necessary attention and have the stamina to do the lessons that you, you want them to do for the day. Number five is to make sure that you give one-on-one -on -one time with your kids. This is not easy. Like I know maybe you're watching like hmm, rolling your eyes. It's not easy, but just be intentional about it, especially if you have a lot of kids. But just be, in, be intentional be intentional about it and communicate that with your kids that I will give you one-on-one -on -one -on -one time and then you can ask me anything that you want. But um, for me, because I have five, I will rotate. You know, if I'm done with this one, then I move to the other one and then the other one. Because if you do just two and then you leave the other one, you're in trouble. <laughs> so ensure that you give your kids a one-on-one -on -one time. They really need that. And you also need that to understand where they are and where they're struggling and where they're excelling in their work. Number six, game changer. Did I say waking the kids up is a game changer? It is. But this one is a real game changer. Teaching independent learning. <laughs> Guys, this, I think, I feel this is one thing that I underestimated when my kids were going to school. I never thought about it and I never saw it as such a huge deal. Teaching kids um, to teach themselves. Basically, that's what it is. Independent learning. It is a game changer and it will make your life much, much easier. And guys, can I just say this? Kids are more than capable to learn things on their own. They don't always need an adult standing in front of them to tell them how to do things. I'll give you an example. When I had my newborn, she automatically taught herself how to breastfeed. I promise you, I never sat down, I never taught her, I never played, <laughs> we never attended a webinar while she was still in the womb, we never had a one-on-one, -on -one. we never had any therapy session about breastfeeding, teaching the child, no, but somehow God has given us this ability within ourselves to self-teach. Independent learning is a very special magical tool <laughs> that you can use for your kids. It has saved me a lot, especially when it comes to homeschooling. And I believe you can use this for your kids to do their schoolwork, like their homework or whatever activity that you want them to do. I have a guest. <laughs> okay, I now have a guest here. She's over here. Um, the eighth point is planning plan 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 right easy said than done i know that like, it becomes difficult to plan um daily lessons for four kids because my my youngest is, is only turning one um soon <laughs> so she's 11 months so it's difficult to plan for four kids what they will do so what i do personally i just plan for a week in advance so i don't plan day by day unless if i'm really 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 lucky and normally i'll see ya okay forgive the noise it's my baby I'll be able to lay down everything you know because think about it if i were to lay down all the crayons and the papers and the play-doh and the slime and everything <laughs> that the kids will need for that day the whole house will be full of slime and play-doh and papers so what i do is i plan for a week and then i have special days where they know maybe we're focusing on a certain thing or focusing on art or depending on if i have the time to do certain things or if we're not going anywhere we have special days for special activities number nine is having hands-on activities um for your kids i'm the top parent who obviously to have hands-on activities for your child so have hands-on activities for your kids that will help you a lot they will learn a lot from them and they will enjoy it because it feels like play right i have other videos about that so i'll leave everything in the description box that you, i think you might be interested in lastly teach them to be responsible human beings if you are using it then put it away i know that's not easy you know because even now i still tell my kids to put things back but they should know that if they were using it then they are responsible for taking it good care of it and then they're done and they must put it away where it's supposed to be so i hope you guys enjoy those 10 tips and leave a comment of what other videos you would like to see i have another video talking about homeschooling difficulty i think it's already live or it's gonna fall live after this one but I hope you enjoy all of them and I hope you leave me a comment, a like, comment, subscribe and share with your friends. Bye!